हेलो माय डे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम यू ऑल टू द बॉटनी क्लासेस होप यू आर ऑल गुड एट योर स्टडीज एट योर हेल्थ एंड एट योर होम स्टे होम स्टे सेफ कमिंग टू द क्लासेस इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ लीफ द वेनेशन एंड द नॉर्मल फंक्शंस ऑफ द लीफ इन टूडेज क्लास वी शैल डिस्कस अबाउट types of leaves and about the phyllotaxy and some modifications of the leaves to perform other additional functions okay coming to the subject when we say types of leaf there are two basic types of leaves first one is simple leaf second one is a compound leaf look at the diagram simple leaves are those in which single leaf blade is or leaf lamina is present or we can say the leaf where the lamina is complete where the lamina is not dissected which is known as a simple leaf for example mango leaf peepal plant leaf papaya leaf where we can see a complete big or non dissected leaf which is called a simple leaf in compound leaf the leaves are those in which the leaf blade or lamina is divided into number of segments known as leaflets means leaf is divided lamina is divided or dissected into small segments small leaves which are known as leaflets or pinnae here you can see the difference between simple and compound leaf in the axil of simple leaf we can see the axillary bud but in the axil of leaflets in the axil of leaflets we will not see any bud we will not see any axillary bud that's the main difference simple leaves have a axillary bud compound leaves do not have a axillary bud we can see the first diagram which is a simple leaf a complete leaf compound leaf having five leaflets five leaflets together make one leaf right we shall see more details in a simple as well as a compound in compound we have a two types one is a pinnately compound other one is a palmately compound pinnately compound leaf in this type the leaflets are present laterally on a common axis leaflets are present on a laterally on a common axis which is known as a rachis okay so what is whatever we see here the midrib portion that's what is known as a midrib or rachis for example gold mohor or gul mohor cassia most of the members of the family fabaceae have the compound leaf okay here there are four types of pinnate compound leaf unipinnate bipinnate tripinnate and decompound unipinnate means there is a only one rachis which is unbranched the midrib or the rachis is unbranched in case of bipinnate you can see in the second diagram the rachis has produced smaller branches and the leaflets are produced on the branches but there is only one level of branching so there is a midrib on the midrib small branches are produced on these branches leaflets are produced on either side right that's how the leaflets are arranged in case of tripinnate again the branch produces secondary branch primary as well as secondary branches are produced in case of decompound like coriander there is no clear differentiation of branches the leaf is highly dissected the leaf is a green but it is a highly dissected hence coriander is an example for the decompound leaf coming to palmately compound leaf all the leaflets of the palmately compound leaves are attached at a common point all the leaflets are attached at a common point you can see in the diagram all those leaflets are attached at a common point that is at the tip of the petiole like fingers of the palm okay here we have some five types of palmately compound leaves unifoliate bifoliate trifoliate 
quadrifoliate or multifoliate. Unifoliate, you can see in the diagram, only one leaflet is attached at the tip of the petiole. Bifoliate, two leaflets are attached at the tip of the petiole. Trifoliate, three leaflets. Four leaflets attached, quadrifoliate. When uh, many leaflets are attached at the tip, it is called multifoliate leaf. Multifoliate palmately compound leaf. Okay. Let's move on to the next concept that is phyllotaxy. Phyllotaxy, nothing but arrangement of the leaves on stem and branches. Arrangement of leaves on stem and branches. We have uh, three basic types of the phyllotaxy. Alternate phyllotaxy, opposite phyllotaxy and world phyllotaxy. You can see in the first diagram which shows alternate. Coming to the point, in this type, the single leaf arises at each node. We all know that leaves arise only at the nodal regions. So, in case of alternate phyllotaxy, a single leaf arises at each node. One node has one leaf and one leaf will be on left side, other leaf will be on right side. Okay. These leaves arise laterally on the stem or branches. For example, sunflower, mango, china, rose, mustard, etc. See the first diagram where we can see the alternate arrangement of the leaves on either side of the stem at each node. Second type is a opposite phyllotaxy. In this type, two leaves arise from each node in opposite directions. Means at one node on either side, there will be two leaves. Two leaves. Okay. Two leaves will be arised on either side at single node. Okay. Here we have uh, two types of uh, opposite phyllotaxy, opposite decasset and opposite superposed. In case of opposite decasset, when one pair of leaf is placed at a right angle 90 degree to the next lower pair is said to be opposite decasset. Okay. You can see in the second diagram, one pair and the next pair which are perpendicular to each other, they are right angles to each other which is observed in a calotropis, osimum sanctum, that is tulsi, etc. Then superposed, in this type, all the pairs of leaves on the stem are arranged one above the other, one above the other, jamun, guava, etc. You can see in the diagram, third diagram, which are arranged one above the other and which are not right angle, which are parallel to each other. Right. Then coming to third type, World phyllotaxy or verticillate phyllotaxy. In this type, more than two leaves arise from each node and form a oral. Oral means one group, one circle, okay, which is observed in the Nerium and Alstonia. You can see in the diagram at each node, more than two leaves arise. Okay, that's all about the phyllotaxy. Let's see some of the modifications of the leaves, some basic modifications. First modification is leaf spine. In some xerophytic plants like Opuntia, cactus, the entire leaf gets modified into a small stiff pointed structure called a spine to check transpiration. Means when the leaf has stomata, it performs transpiration, loss of water. But when the leaves are being modified into spines, the stomata will not be there. So, to reduce the transpiration, to reduce the water loss, the leaves are developed into spines. Okay. Sometimes only a part of the leaf such as a stipule get modified into spines to protect plants from grazing animals like Gigipus and Acacia. Means if the complete leaf modifies, for example, in Aponsia, in some cases the leaf will be there, but the parts of the leaf like stipule get modified into the spiny structure, the stipule modifies into spine. Okay. So, for example, Jezipas and Acacia, where the stipules get modified into hard curved spiny structures. Okay. Next modification of leaf is a leaf tendril. In certain plants having a weak stem, having weak stem, the entire leaf or a part of leaf gets modified into 
an elongated cylindrical coiled wiry sensitive structure known as a tendril and remember elongated coiled wiry coiled remember coiled tendril means coiled structure okay and this provide mechanical support to climb on the support provide mechanical support on the support to the plant having weak stem to climb on the supporting plant different plants have different type of tendril means tendril formed by different parts of the leaf for example in case of wild pea the entire leaf is tendrilar wild pea later that is a lathyrus odoratus the entire leaf is modified into tendril in sweet pea that is a pisum sativum the terminal leaflets are tendrilar remember the leaf is compound so the in the compound leaf there are some basal leaflets and terminal leaflets the terminal leaflets become coiled structures what we call a tendrilar leaflets in case of gloriosa leaf is simple here the leaf affects leaf tip modifies it to tendril lastly in smilax the stipules become tendrilar leaf remain as it is for performing photosynthesis but for support the stipules get modified into tendrilar structures then leaf hooks in a begonia angur cati the cat's nail the tunnel three leaflets get modified into three stiff curved pointed hooks which look like cat's nail hook just remember hook coiled structures usually we all know that so it is hook so the three leaflets become hard rigid and curved and that hooks they cling to the bark of the tree I mean they hold the bark tightly support and they help plant for climbing for example begonia is an elegant hook climber begonia plant is a weak stemmed plant with the help of hook it will climb on the other plants lastly phyllod we have seen phylloclade in case of a, the stem modification in case of opuntia cladod in case of the asparagus here the phyllod phyllod means the leaf like structure formed by other parts phyllod in some plants the petiole becomes flat green and leaf like and performs photosynthesis this is known as a phyllod okay so for example acacia auriculiformis which is also known as a australian acacia which is brought to india by from australia the normal leaf is a bipinnately compound you can see in the diagram the bipinnately compound leaf but the bipinnately compound leaf is caducus means it will fall off very soon so the petiole gets modified into phyllod this xerophytic adaptation to reduce transpiration here remember the stomata are present only on the leaf not on the petiole okay when stomata are present water will be lost through transpiration when uh, petiole perform photosynthesis the leaflets leaf don't have function so here the petiole is a flattened green chlorophyllous photosynthetic perform the function of leaf so here the leaves are caducus these are some basic modifications of the leaves this is enough about the leaves we shall discuss about inflorescence in the next class till that keep learning stay home stay safe one more thing hope you are not watching the video completely i observed from last eight videos please don't neglect the classes in this lockdown pandemic scenario please make use of the resources even if you have any doubts regarding these classes just write over the comment section i'll come back soon with the respective answer okay anyway take care bye bye